Hey, what's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode from the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today we're going to talk about three traits, three traits of top producers that separate them from all the rest, that separate the top 1% income earners from the mediocre majority. What's the difference that makes the difference? What's the secret sauce that top producers employ? that most mortgage professionals have no clue about that makes them so extraordinary. What is it that they do? What is it that they have? What's that hidden ingredient of success that is the difference that makes the difference? That's what we're gonna be talking about today. Now, truth be told, I just did a little bit of research on Google and I found out as of today, the 20th of September, 2019, that the average income for a loan officer is $73,650 per year. Now, depending on your level of ambition, your goals, your background, and your self-image, you may think that's good, you may think that's really bad. It all depends on perspective. Truth though is that top producers make upwards of 500K plus per year. So that's a far cry from a top producer. Now, obviously, everyone would love to be making half a million a year, right? Everyone would love to have that lifestyle, that freedom, that buying power, the choices and options that avail themselves when you're making that kind of dough. Everyone wants to be a champion, but not everyone's willing to do what it takes to become a champion. Not everyone's willing to pay the price for success. Everyone wants the prize, but not everyone is willing to pay the price. What is it that separates these high achievers? Is it that they're just grinding harder than anyone else? Is it because they're lacking integrity and they're pulling the wool over people's eyes and they're basically shysters? Some people might believe that. Is it that they're willing to put themselves through more pain and more sacrifice and more grinding and more sacrifice of their family and their sanity than anyone else? Some, see, some people might think that and believe that. Now, here's the thing. If you believe that being a top producer is about working longer and harder and sacrificing, sacrificing your health and your family and your sanity, chances are you'll never be a top producer because deep down inside, your subconscious mind will do all in its power to sabotage your success, to prevent yourself from having those kind of sacrifices be made because it's painful. And truth be told, we don't want to be out of alignment with our values. If we value family, we're not going to want to sacrifice our family. If we value sanity, we're not going to want to sacrifice our sanity. If we value health, we're not going to want to sacrifice our health. So if we have a disalignment based on erroneous assumptions about what it means to be a top producer and what it takes to become a top producer, it's going to cause us to forever chase our tails and self-sabotage and get in our own way. So that's why I thought it would be important to talk about this so that you guys can have an accurate depiction of what it really takes to be a top producer and align your beliefs with truth so that you can get out of your own way and realize that being a top producer and making two, three, four, five times what you're making now isn't about working any harder or longer. Although for some of you who are only working part-time, maybe that's the case for a time to get yourself off the runway and into the jet stream. But for most of you, it's not about putting in more hours. It's about getting more from the hours you're putting in. It's not about working harder, it's about working smarter. So let me cover now three traits that separate top producers from all the rest. The first trait is that they're decisive and committed. Those two always come hand in hand, decisive and committed. What do I mean by those words? I heard a great definition for commitment, that commitment is doing what you said you were going to do long after the mood you've set it in has left you. Commitment reminds me of the story of the um, chicken and the pig walking down the street and they see a church nearby and they see festivities and they peek through the window and it inspires all these festivities inspires the chicken to say to the pig hey why don't we do something special to come up with some money to make a contribution to the church and the pig's like great idea what should we do 
Well, let's put on a big buffet, invite friends and family, have them donate towards the cause. And the pig's like, great idea. What should we serve? How about bacon and eggs? All of a sudden, pig's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Not so fast. For you, that's a contribution. For me, it's an all-out commitment, right? Because the difference between the pig and the chicken was that the chicken just contributed eggs. It didn't take sacrifice. But for the pig, he had to go all in. He had to sacrifice his very life. So commitment is an all-in sort of thing. It's not half-stepping. It's not pulling punches. It's an all-in, I will do whatever it takes, do or die sorts of, sort of thing. But it's inside of the premise that you're working smarter, not harder. It's inside of the premise that you can live in alignment with your values for family, for health, for faith, for the things that matter most that you can live in alignment without sacrificing those things and yet still be all in, not half-stepping, not pulling punches. What about this word decisive? What does that mean, decisive? We have different ideas of what that means. Quick decisions, to be able to choose an option on a menu and not hum and haw forever, but to be decisive on what you want on that menu when you're in the restaurant. The word decisive is another form of the word decision. And the root of decision is size, which is the same root as scissor, which means to cut off from. It's the same root as homicide, herbicide, pesticide. Side is to cut off from or to kill. So in essence, decisive means you're cutting off from any other option. You're cutting off from any other option but victory, cutting off from any other option than your dream, cutting off from any other option than winning. No retreat. There's a story about Cortez and how he took the new land and how one of his secret sauce battle plan uh, strategies for victory is that he would, he would burn the retreat boats. So... While his you know, contemporaries might have the retreat boats, just in case things go bad and they have to retreat, he would burn the retreat boats. There is no backup plan. It's either win or freaking die. There is no backup plan. And some of you still have your retreat boats. You're like, I got plan B, I got plan C. Maybe if this doesn't work, I'll do X, Y, and Z. And so you're already entertaining the idea of failure. You're ent entertaining the idea of what if this doesn't pan out? Maybe I'll go back to the day job. Maybe I'll go and I'll have to do this, have to do that. And you start the journey towards success already entertaining failure. What's the chance you're going to be victorious if you're spending your energy, your time talking about plan B and C? Chances are not so good. Cortez not kn knew that to be true. That's why he burned the retreat boats. No option for failure, period. All in. We either win or die, period. So that's what it means to be co committed and decisive. It means you know what you want. You're committed to it. Ain't nothing stopping you. You will make your choices based on where you're committed to being and who you're committed to being. You don't think of your goals. You think from your goals. What would the person who wants to make half a million a year working 35 hours a week need to do in this moment? What decisions would he need to make? What beliefs would he need to have? What kind of choices would he need to make in order to manifest that life? You don't think of your goals. You think from your goals. Thinking of your goal is, man, I really would love to make half a million a year. That'd be great. Love the money. Love the freedom. Thinking from your goals is who do I need to be in this moment? to be true to my dream, to manifest my dream, to be the man, the leader, or if you're a woman, to be the, the woman, the leader that you need to be in order to manifest your dream, to be true to your dream. Because at any moment, you're either true to your fears, your lack, limitation, and scarcity, or you're true to your dreams and the expansion you're called into. And you can either be committed to your dream or you can be committed to your comfort zone. You can't be committed to both. Your dream is always going to be outside of your comfort zone. Have you noticed? So top producers have conditioned themselves through repetition, through specific rituals and daily routines 
to build certainty, to build confidence, but also to cultivate total commitment and defiant resolve. It's either win or die, period. There is no backup plan. The second trait of highly successful mortgage professionals that separate the top producers from everyone else is that they're coachable. They're humble. They're malleable. They realize they don't have all the answers. The definition of insanity is you do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. And a lot of people, that's the folly and the error they fall into is that they do the same thing over and over again, but they're, they're not open to new insight. They do the trial and error. They are trying to build the foundation for a skyscraper with a garden trowel or with a shovel instead of an excavator. And they don't realize that if they can get out of their own way, check their ego at the door and receive counsel and advice from someone else who has already been there, done that, got the scars to prove it, got the results to prove it, they can condense decades into days. See, if you want to make a souffle and you've never made souffle before, there's two ways to do it. Wing it and just wonder what's in a souffle and just fly to see your pants and you know how well that's going to go. Not so well. Or... You can go on Google and you can look for a master chef's souffle recipe. You can follow the instructions in terms of what ingredients, in what amounts, in what proportions, in what sequence, with what temperature of heat in the oven, for how long. And all of a sudden, you've got a master chef souffle from scratch on attempt one. That's the difference between winging it, flying by the seat of your pants, just trying to reinvent the wheel on your own versus getting recipe, a proven recipe for success. That's how you condense decades into days. That's how you bypass this trouble and struggle and trial and error of doing it the hard way. Why I'm messing around trying to be a pioneer, getting arrows in your back, when you can go and go straight to what works? Why try to build a bicycle from scratch, not knowing what part is what, versus just having the bicycle built? You know what I'm saying? So having a proven recipe, can be a massive success accelerator. It certainly has in my life. I can tell you one of the biggest reasons why it took me so long to get to seven figures in my career is that I was too cheap. And I kept saying, I can't afford to hire a coach. I can't afford to get counsel. I can't afford to get mentors. I got to pony up, a few, I got to you know save a few more pennies. Maybe I need to grind a little harder. I need to figure this thing out on my own a little longer maybe watch a few YouTube videos, maybe get a few eBooks. Well, what happened is instead of getting to seven figures within a matter of a few years, it took over a decade because I wasn't willing to invest in myself in a proven plan. And I was more committed to my lack, limitation, scarcity, and excuses than I was to my dream and expediting the process. And another reason why people can get in their own way around a coachability is they're more committed to being right than they are in getting the right results. They're more committed to being right about their excuses than their lack and limitation and all the reasons why they can't. They don't have anything open in their hearts and minds to allow how to do it the right way because they're already right about all their excuses, all their limitations. As Henry Ford once said, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. But if your cup is full of water, right now I've got a cup, it's half full, okay? But this cup was full of water all the way to the top. What's the likelihood I can add in any new insight, any new revelation, any new breakthrough information? Slim to none because it's already full. We got to empty our cups so that we're ready to receive and realize that the more we know, the more we realize we don't know that there's so much more to learn. When we're inside the bottle, it's pretty hard to see the label on the outside. Have you noticed? It's hard to see those blind spots because you're too close to the action. That's why peak performers always have peak performance coaches who reveal those blind spots, who get them to see what they can't see from a new perspective. They get them to see the champion that's inside them that perhaps they can't even see in themselves. To get them to align their beliefs, their mindset, their activities, their routines, and their execution with champion level execution, beliefs, and routines. Because otherwise, affirmation, as the late and great Jim Rohn said, affirmation without discipline is the beginning of delusion. 
we can talk a big game, we can dream a big game, but if we're not willing to walk a big game, it's the beginning of self-delusion. And a lot of people, they fall into that trap. They talk a big game, but when it comes to actually being coachable and show up and do the work like their freaking life depends on it, that's where they fall short. They fall into old habits, old ruts, old ways of thinking, and that stinking thinking takes them out of the game. They start to go back into those old ruts of seeing themselves as a chump instead of a champ, whining instead of being committed to winning, seeing the constraints instead of seeing the opportunities. A pessimist will always see the difficulty in every opportunity. The op optimist will see the opportunity in every difficulty. Winston Churchill said that, and I believe it's so true that it's all a matter of perspective. So we have to empty our cups. We've got to stay malleable. We've got to stay open to receive. We've got to be willing to get real with ourselves that our way ain't working. Our way is working to the extent of what we've got today. And if you're not happy with the results you're getting today, chances are you're going to have to get outside of yourself to get a better, more effective, more proven system. you got to upgrade your gardening trowel to an excavator. you got to stop going to the gunfight with a butter knife and upgrade to an Uzi. Because if you're head and knees looking for the sunset, we got a problem. I mean, it just ain't going to work, right? But sometimes our pride gets in the way and we get so attached to doing it the way we've always done it. We're not willing to change. It's like the old saying, you can't teach old dogs new tricks. Well, we ain't dogs and these ain't tricks. So we got to get real with ourselves. Is our way working at the level we need it to? If the answer is no, it's time to get out of our own way and seek counsel and advice. Someone who's been there, done that, got the scars to prove it, got the results to prove it, got proof in the pudding that their way works better than your way. If we don't find a proven solution outside of trying to reinvent the wheel, doing it the hard way, we're going to be grinding a lot longer and harder than we should. And there's no brownie uh, points at the bank for doing it the hard way. Have you noticed? There's no merit badge at the bank for grinding longer and harder for that money. There just isn't. So the second trait that separates the top producers from all the rest is they're coachable. They're humble. They're willing to you know, execute a proven plan. If you want to build a phenomenal physique, you're going to go to a personal trainer who's masterful at doing this. They've got all kinds of case studies and success stories of people who have already had transformation in their body. They're going to show you how to condition your mindset so you become, uh, in your own self-image, someone who sees yourself as fit and healthy and ripped and vital. They're going to get you to go to the gym and do cert certain routines with a certain amount of reps, with a certain amount of sets for a certain duration, doing certain exercises with a certain amount of volume, with a certain amount of intensity, a specific recipe, a specific formula. They're going to give you dietary prescription on what to eat and what not to eat, when to eat, how many times to eat, what types of foods, and so on. And notice how all those little distinctions all mesh into a master formula that allows you to master the dream of being fit and to be at your best physically. The same goes with your business. This is no different. But some of you guys think that you can just figure it out on your own and you're wondering why it freaking sucks and why it's not working. Wonder no longer. Pioneers get arrows in their backs. If you just fumble around in the gym, you don't know what to be eating, what exercise to be doing. You can be in the gym every single day and hardly see any difference, hardly see any drop in weight, hardly see any muscle mass be, being built because you're going there, but you're not doing it productively. Let's not confuse activity with productivity. There's a big difference between activity and productivity. Activity is you just go to the gym, but you're not necessarily knowing how to do it effectively. Productivity is you got the right formula. You got a proven plan. You plan the work, you work the plan, you follow the recipe, you get the result. So that's one of the things that separates the top dogs from all the rest. They're coachable. They empty their cup. They're ready to receive. They'd rather follow a proven plan, make a bold, intelligent, and strategic investment in their breakthrough with a proven plan than just winging it and taking 10 times longer and wasting all kinds of time they could never get back, all kinds of opportunities they could never get back, sacrificing time away from their kids and their spouse and their family and magical moments and the dance recitals they can never get back because they're doing it the hard way. They're not willing to settle for that. Screw that. Life is too short. They just want to get straight to what works. Boom. Just set it and forget it. Stick the key in the ignition and drive away. And the third trait that separates the top producers from all the rest, my friends, is resourcefulness. 
being resourceful. What does it mean to be resourceful? What it means to be resourceful is when you're committed and you're decisive, you're, you've made a defiant resolve to a specific outcome, you've committed to your dream, you're all in, then you've got a whatever it takes mindset. So it doesn't matter how much money you have or how much money you don't have. It doesn't matter how much time you have or how much time you don't have. What I know is that the committed always find a way, always find a way to win. Winners always find a way to win. And if you want to win, you can't afford to half step. You can't afford to pull punches. you got to be all in if you want to win. So resourcefulness is about an whatever it takes mindset. Come hell or freaking high water, you find a way. It doesn't matter what obstacle stands in your way. You find the time, you find the money. Because the interested always find an excuse. The committed always find a way. For example, heaven forbid, if you have kids, one of your kids were to get sick and you didn't have adequate childcare and you needed to come up with 10, 15, 20K to actually keep your kid alive. Come hell or freaking high water, you come up with that money like that, would you not? Well, when your dream becomes as important to you as keeping your kid alive, you'll have your dream. Until then, you have your lack, limitation, scarcity, and excuses. Until then, you've got your rationalizations, justifications, and all the reasons why you can't. When you're committed, you always find a way. Nothing stops you. This is how powerful you are. When you're defiantly committed to something, nothing's going to get in your way. Ain't nothing going to stop you. Come hell or freaking high water, you find a way because failure is not an option. Retreat is not an option. Quitting is not an option. It's do or die. That's the heart of a champion. That's the heart of a winner. If you want to be a winner, you can't afford to be a wimp. Winners never quit. Quitters never win. And it's a defiant resolve that marks the difference between the upper echelon top producers in this industry and everyone else. And it goes for every single category of business you can imagine from real estate agents to insurance agents to any entrepreneur, any type of background, even people in athletics. It's the defiantly committed people who don't just do 10 push-ups; they do 12 push-ups. When they get to the end of themselves and they can't do a single additional chin-up, they do another one. They go all the way to failure and then a little bit more. They give it everything of they've got. They leave it all on the field. They leave it all in whatever arena might be their specific arena. They're all in. When you're defiantly committed, nothing stops you. Most people want to put in the minimums and get the maximums. Most people have entitlement syndrome. They think it should be easier. They, should, they think it should come easier. When things get hard, there's a sense of entitlement that's kind of undergirding their paradigm where they're like, why me? Why is this happening to me? Why is this so hard? Why is this so difficult? How come other people are achieving I'm not? And they start to have this sense of entitlement like it's supposed to be easy. You want to make half a million a year, my friend, it ain't going to be easy. Everyone wants to be fit, rich, and happy. Most people are fat, broken, unhappy. Why? Because it takes something. It takes something to be a champion. It takes something to be a winner. It takes someone to be extraordinary. It takes someone to be a legendary in their legacy. It ain't going to come easy. What makes you think it's supposed to be easy for you? The greater the obstacle, the greater the glory in overcoming it. So bring it, baby. We eat problems for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We metabolize problems and turn, turn them into opportunities. That's what champions do. But affirmation without discipline, like Jim Rohn said, is the, af is the beginning of delusion. So we got to stop thinking it's supposed to be easy and embrace it as an adventure in problem solving, an adventure in being resourceful. An adventure in building your grit. You got to have too much grit to quit. Building that muscle to become the man or woman you're called to be, to fulfill your calling on this planet, to make the difference you're called to make. But that's not going to happen if you're taking the easy path. That's not going to happen if you're feeling sorry for yourself. I'm preaching to myself right now, friends. I'm 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 facing challenges. When you embrace big goals, guess what? You're going to have to embrace big challenges. If you want to be the heavyweight champion in the world in boxing, guess what? You're going to get punched in the freaking face. That's just part and parcel. That's what you're signing up for. 
And if you want to achieve big things, you can't afford to expect small challenges because that's going to knock you out. That's going to take you out. That's going to have you sticking your tail between your legs, playing the victim role, playing small and shrinking back in your comfort zone and feeling sorry for yourself. And that's just going to keep you stuck where you're at, playing small, playing it safe and being less than what you are called to be. And the greatest glory in you achieving that big, hairy, audacious goal you have for yourself is not what you get. It's who you become to become a better version of yourself with more resourcefulness, with more character, with more strength, with more imperturbability, with more peace, with more power, with more poise. That is the crown. That is the reward of you stepping into embracing this process. But in order for you to win, in order for you to be the champion you're called to be, you got to be these three traits. You got to step into them all in. Coachable, committed, resourceful, and decisive. If you're willing to defiantly commit yourself to owning those three traits, being those three traits, embodying those three traits, I promise you, you, my friend, will not only become a top producer, being a shining star in this industry, being a leader of influence in this industry, you're going to be someone who people look up to. But most importantly, you're going to see yourself in the mirror and you're going to know that you're becoming the best version of yourself that you're giving it everything you got, that you're embracing this thing called life all in. You're going to have a humble sense of pride that you are all in, no regrets. You're not going to be looking at the, the life you had at the end of your life and say, I wish uh, I did more. I could have, would have, should have. No, you're going to say, I was all in. I gave it everything I got. And that's a life well lived, my friends. So if this message is landing for you, if this message is hitting home for you and you'd like to learn how to apply these three traits in your life and to be able to catapult you to the next level in your business, in your leadership, both at work and at home, if you know you're capable of so much more and you just need a little new, a little shift in perspective, a paradigm shift, if you are realizing that you're using the gardening trowel or the shovel to dig as opposed to using an excavator. If you're realizing you're heading to the gunfight with a butter knife, unequipped and ill-equipped to win, then I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call. This is only for mortgage professionals who are on 100% commission. They want to make $100,000 or more in additional income per year, and they're defiantly committed to making that dream real. They're not hoping for it. They're not wishing for it. They're committed to it. If that's you and this message has hit home for you, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we lift up the hood on your business. We're going to look at what's working, what's not working, where are you at now, where you want to be. If we can help you get there, by all means, we will show you how. If not, we'll be the first people to advise you to pass on our services. Either way, though, you're going to leave the call with massive value, massive clarity, and ch chances are we'll have some fun too. So if that sounds good to you, go to mortgagemarketingcoach.com, book yourself into our calendar. Looking forward to connecting with you and showing you the pathway to your breakthrough. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I trust you got some value from this. Now go forth, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action, and chances are you're going to get massive results, guys. Be blessed. I love you. appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in. This is Doran Aldana from MortgageMarketingCoach.com coming at you with another kick-ass episode from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Come again. See you soon. Peace.